Good evening, friends. We're uh, tracing the footsteps of our Savior in uh, that promise that God has made that he will give a son, a son through whom redemption will come. And uh, that's why these birth stories in the Old Testament are so important. And we started looking at uh, this son that God gave to this family in Bethlehem. And uh, so turn with me once again to Ruth chapter 4, and we'll just read uh, from verse 13. Uh, so Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the woman of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Obed, a beautiful name, a servant. And he's given this name by the woman because he is born to servants. Now we saw uh, this beautiful thing that this is Naomi's son. And yet, he was born to Ruth. It was Ruth's son. So how should we make sense of this? We, we touched upon it last week, but I want us to reflect upon it because it brings us into such a foreign world, doesn't it? In the Old Testament, God has made a provision. A provision that was meant to keep alive a family to keep alive the name of the family when there is no heir. And so in Deuteronomy 25, we read about this law, this law, which has this strange name, Leveret Law, the law of the brother-in-law. And so we read about it in Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 and 6. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in to her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And the first son whom she bears shall succeed to the name of his dead brother that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. Now you see, this is, is this very strange provision. But God's concern is really that the name, the family, would be maintained. So if there is no son, no heir, no one to carry forth the family name, God makes a provision the brother-in-law should step in and marry. Now, the strangeness is, is that this wouldn't work, would it? Because Naomi is the one to whom this law applies. It doesn't apply to Ruth, not directly. And we see Naomi referred to this. The family has gone to Moab. There her husband dies. There her two sons die. And she is stuck with these two widows. But they're both Moabites. They're, they're, they're pagan women. Because they were found and their sons were married there in Moab. And so when 
No, oh my God, the famine has been lifted. God's blessing has once again come upon his promised people and the house of bread is again full of bread. Naomi leaves and her daughter-in-laws go with her. But then in verse 8, Naomi says to her daughter-in-laws, Go, return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as he has dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. So she tries to persuade them, but they remain with her. Then she goes a little deeper. Naomi says in verse 11, Turn back, my daughters, why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Now, my speech here is very, very pointed. She's saying to her daughters in law, there's no hope for you. Because the only hope that we have is if I were now to be taken by a brother-in-law and give birth to a son, then you have to wait for that son to grow up and then be married, because that's how the law works. So she's saying, there is no hope. So go back. Forsake me, because there is no hope for you in Israel. And we see that Oprah, her daughter-in-law, leaves. But not Ruth. She will not go back. And oh my, turns ugly here. And she says to Ruth, See, your sister-in-law, verse 15, has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. She is saying to Naomi, uh, to Ruth, Naomi is saying to Ruth, you're better off with your own people, with your own gods, than the God of Israel. But Ruth refuses. Ruth has more faith than Naomi. Ruth, the Moabites, give us one of the most beautiful speeches in this whole book. Verse 16, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you, for where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord, may Yahweh, do so to me, and more so, if anything but death parts me from you. She is saying, I'm totally committed to follow you and to bind myself to you, no matter what. If there is no hope but death, that's good enough for me, because I am now Yahweh's servant. And that's the beauty. Ruth, the Moabites, embodies really the spirit of her greater son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the servant of servants. Because you see, what Ruth is doing is she is stepping into Naomi's place. She is saying, I will stand in your place and be married so that I can give birth to a son that is your son, 
Thou will carry on the name of your family in Israel. I am so committed to keep the name of your family alive in Israel that I give myself, my womb, my whole body to stand in your place. You see how she embodies the Lord Jesus Christ who steps completely into our place, becoming a servant even unto death. Ruth embodies that spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. She refuses to give up and so she steps into this marriage. That's why Boaz prays her. There in chapter 3 verse 10 when he says, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made the last kindness greater than the first, in that you have not gone after younger men, whether rich, uh, whether poor or rich. She has just proposed to Boaz. She has just made a proposition to him and asked him to marry her. And the reason he praises her for that and says this kindness is greater than the first, the first kindness is her commitment to stay with Naomi and to take care of her, to come back. The second is the servant stepping in to serve Naomi's family and be for her the substitute that keep the family name alive. And that's why the woman also prays her that she is better for Naomi than seven sons. She loves Naomi. You see, Obed is a beautiful name because it fits his parents. Ruth was a servant who did everything she could to save this family and keep their name alive. And she was a Moabitess. And it's interesting because throughout this book, we are constantly reminded that she is a Moabitess. And why is that strange? Because no Moabite could enter, could, could, was allowed into the temple until the 10th generation because they resisted Israel. That's why God uh, put that uh, uh, command there. But here's the thing. The Moabites now shows that she is a true mother of Christ and that reveals to us the work of Christ that's going to go and be the savior of the nations. People from every tribe and tongue and nation will come in. Ruth shows us the power of the servant of servants. The salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ truly saves all people from every tribe and nation who rests and believes in him. Never give up hope. Never give up hope for anyone that they are beyond the reach of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we stand amazed at how you keep the promise of the Savior alive and how in these birth stories you reveal to us the glory of Christ who is the servant of all servants who has stepped into our place so that we may be welcomed in your name and in fellowship with you forever. We thank you that that salvation extends to the ends of the earth. And we pray that this Christmas season, the power of Christ's saving work will be felt throughout the earth. May you save those whom we love, who are yet estranged from you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.